and he offered me a dollar and 70 cents an hour to go to work up here. And I'd been driving a truck. I don't know why that truck for me. And I thought, this is nice. And I'm gonna be hauling pottery all over the world. And he cut me a loose. I just got out of high school. This is in 75. And he cut me loose on that truck hauling pottery to Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Florida. And I thought I was one of the, I mean, I was a head on the thing. And it come out, me and Joe, I got to doing all kind of trades for Joe. I was working mechanic at the farm. I remember him starting the soil business. I loaded kills. I packed these trucks. We used to pack these trucks in layers, not on pallets with a forklift, hand loaded each and every piece and unloaded each and every piece. And I was, I know when I got hired, the human resources place was pretty small. I came down here at 10 o'clock one morning and walked in. The first person I seen was Joe Craven. Of course, he started laughing. I didn't think things was funny that morning. I needed a job. But he was like, he said, Queen, I've been waiting on you to get down here. I said, okay. He said, when can you go to work? I said, well, I mean, I can go to work anytime. He said, hey, it's $20. You will go eat lunch. I need you to come on back. And I went to work that day. And that was, it was. Pottery. And I was coming up on the weekends, Saturdays, Saturday mornings and getting a load of stuff and taking it back to Jack Collins' warehouse in Decatur. And um, after about a period of about four years, Jack and your dad, Joe, got together and Jack, uh, Joe ended up buying Jack's business. So therefore, when that transition took place and that happened in um, 77, the fall of 77, uh, Joe offered the, the uh, Collins Distributing Company employees a position if they wanted it. So that's how myself and Stan and Glenda ended up up here in Gillsville. Um, and quite frankly, it was a bit of a culture shock for, for us. Because <laughs> where I was living in Decatur, there was a, in, it, back in the 70s, there was a 24 hour grocery store three blocks from my house. And then I came to Gillsville and we're, you know, if you need anything from the store, it closes at 7.30. I'm gonna throw a, a, one of my best friends in the world under the bus, this is a true story. <clears throat> we worked in Lower Bill in several hours and me and along with Phil Ferguson, they were several more. But Joe, I don't know what he had done, but Joe told him not to get on a forklift ever again, ever. He told him that several times that day. <laughs> Joe didn't even get out of the door until we looked around and Phil had jumped on a forklift again. We didn't pay much attention. Hey, we wasn't a boss. We didn't, you know, we were young. We just, we just worked. About three minutes later, I heard like, it wasn't just a crash, but it was a continuing that lasted for something that sounded like an hour, but it was probably only about five minutes. Phil, some way, had run under a pallet on the back dock. Well, back then on the back dock, we would stack probably five pallets high sometimes and four rows deep. There's still gravel off the back of that bank where Phil dumped the entire row of pies. I don't know how many hundreds fell and were busted, but, and the bad thing about the stories are so loud, Joe actually heard it from where he's from and started hollering dude before he got back to us, he already knew who had done it. So, I, don't, I guess we cost Joe several million dollars playing down here, but we did work hard, but the bad thing about it was, he was at least as bad as us, if not worse, and, and all of them were just as bad. So we, we had a good time, and we were so blessed to get to work down here, and I, I want to thank them all. Thank everyone out here. And the Collins orders sold for higher price than what the Craven orders were. So Joe had told us, he said, y'all if y'all need it, y'all go up there and get it, whatever you need, go up there and get it. Well, you got Enoch sitting here trying to build inventory and pallets for <laughs> Craven, and you got me and Stan pulling orders for Collins, and ours are selling the higher money. So we go, Enoch had pallets sitting up here and uh, that he was counted on his whole, I, I got X amount of pallets. We go over and we slice that plastic open on the pallet and take what we needed, because we've done what we've been told. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And Enoch was, Enoch so was raising hell. He, he, he was raising hell. <laughs> and uh, so Stan would aggravate the shit out of him. He said, he, Stan, he'd tell Stan, he said, you just need to go back in, 
eat you some clay and shit you a strawberry pop. That's what you do. <laughs> leave my heart. <laughs> you know. <laughs> before it could stop the crisis, a lot on how we had to it, to come in with a whole tight spent, not off when they do because I think help was that one. They said, what happened? I said, we don't know. <laughs> Last I know, we hit a telephone pole with a coin up, and I told them, keep driving. <laughs> we don't need the day on down here. So we backed that truck, and I think that was maybe one of the last ones he made driving the truck. But we we had a ball down here, and I'm going to tell you, we made a little money, and our biggest concern. About, uh, it was probably in the 90s. I was working here one morning, and it was uh, pretty early. It was four daylight, and... We usually started about 5, 5.30, and we was turning, and uh, all of a sudden, Jerry Standards, he come in the back door back there and walked up through here, and he said, uh, uh, where'd you park your truck at? I said, oh, out here next to the road, up next to that fence. He said, uh, well, he said, I'm going to tell you, he said, it's down here in this lower building. <laughs> I said, what? He said, it's down there in that lower building. So I, evidently I knocked it out of gear and it run in this old uh, cement shop building down here. So I had to go down there and move my truck. It didn't hurt the old building and, uh, or my truck, neither one, but uh, that was a wake up call. You need to always put it in gear. I was a single dad. And there wasn't a lot of money back then with two kids and, and not a lot of money, but I had some money, so I remember this well. And I'd like to thank him for this today. We got a week's pay for Christmas back then, which was pretty good. And I was thinking coming down the road, I said, well, I got my week's pay, and I'm going to get a week's pay for Christmas. I, I can get by, I can get by this. What I had forgotten was at the beginning of the year, Joe had given all of us a little card. And if we sold so much by the end of the year, we got a thousand dollar bonus. I forgot about it. So he had a Christmas party every year, during the Christmas party every year. Um, we had a pretty big dinner, several employees. Uh, we got to win some little bit of awards. So anyway, I went to the Christmas party. When I got there, he had reminded us of that thing. And this is what he done. Instead of taking all the time, they said there were probably 30 or 40 people got this. I got my week's pay. I got a week's pay for Christmas. We had surpassed that goal and I got a check for a thousand dollars and I won an award which come with a cash prize. And I probably left out that time with about as much money as I'd ever had at one time. That's what kind of people we work for. You don't see it anymore. And I wanna thank him today for that. Not only we have a good Christmas. I worked at this place when I was underage, I guess you might say back then, but uh, uh, paid in cash so the IRS can really get a hold of Joe so but no 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 I, I lived right over here and I started working here when I was 13 I thought it was earlier but it was not because I can remember and when I turned 14 in January I worked up here in the afternoons with Joe unloading the kill and that stupid song I shot the sheriff came on and and I think Joe put it on a loop so that's all I've heard for the past 50 years is I shot the sheriff running around in my head so uh but i looked it up and it was it was uh, it came out in 1974 so i worked it when i was 13 years old and 14 years old here and it really helped me to uh, uh his work at work ethics were well it was part slavery and part <laughs> part good part good for me so uh it molded me to be able to uh to have good work ethics but i think made a lot of friends mm -hmm. uh the one thing I can say about employees Craven Potter, everybody felt like family to everybody.